I am so, so scared. Can you tell? Can you sense the fear that is radiating out of your phone, computer, laptop, TV? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? I can feel it. Today's video... Hmm. Treat it like a podcast, gonna be super casual. I've got my phone here with a list of notes. But today's video, I am going to be sharing with you what I deem to be an incredibly unpopular opinion. I don't know for maybe a lot of you who saw this tour like last year in the States or you know, wherever else she's performed. This is potentially old news to you talking about this, but as someone who just saw this tour at the time of filming this a week ago, well by the time you see this video, probably been like two weeks, the tour is still very much happening in certain parts of the world. And I posted a photo, I'm gonna to read to you the caption. It was a great weekend that I feel so lucky to have experienced, a core cool memory for sure, but it was incredibly exhausting. The Eras tour was great, but my hot take is I still loved every single one of her individual tours better than this one. I was actually going to do a detailed video with all of my thoughts, good and bad, but I don't think I can do with the rat from the Unhinged fans for having an opinion that isn't part of the majority. And I had, I'm not going to be all the people like, oh, I had so many people. I had like maybe seven people <laughs> tell me to share my thoughts. Some of you said to me that you would protect me <laughs> in the comments. I have this feeling that there are going to be some some comments just ripping me to shreds. I'm really scared, I'm scared. And this is coming from someone who is a fan of Taylor Swift. <laughs> I'm a fan of her music. But I like to think I'm also like pretty level-headed and not unhinged. And I'm a little bit scared that I'm going to be burnt at the stake. Full on witch hunt. I really sat with this, these thoughts. I sat with this opinion for over a week. Like I said, I could have filmed this video last week, but I thought, you know what? I'm just going to let, let my feelings ruminate, let them sink in, maybe I'll change my mind, and I haven't. And I suppose the reason I'm filming this video today is because I think that difference of opinions are healthy, and I think sometimes we live in echo chambers on social media, and with certain things, I think we just really do see a very much one-sided opinion, and I do think it's healthy. I think it challenges us, I think it challenges our critical thinking skills to sometimes look at a situation from multiple angles. So I feel the need to just get some housekeeping out of the way before we get into my little unofficial notes. Let me pick up my phone because it fell. The rundown of the sketch today is I'm going to be talking about merch first. I'm going to be talking about the stadium and slash arena. And then I'm going to be talking about the fans. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm just going to be finishing up with some final little thoughts. I do feel the need to say and to disclaim that some of you may think this is an incredibly negative video today. And you know what? It is. I'm being, I'm just ranting, okay? I'm ranting a little bit. And this is literally a conversation that I would probably have. Obviously, it wouldn't be so one-sided. Like, if I was sitting with a friend in my kitchen over a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, this is kind of the conversation that I would have with them in regards to the tour. And when I actually posted that photo on Instagram, I had a few people reach out to me, not many, I had a few people reach out to me and said, oh my God, you're the first person that I've told this to, but I, I literally feel the same way, but I've just been too scared to share the thoughts. And I think it's because there is just so much hype and so much like emphasis about how amazing this tour was. And I think with, maybe some of the toxic attributes of the fandom. People don't feel like they can just be honest and share their thoughts. I'm very grateful and lucky to have experienced this and I had a great time and I did enjoy myself. And of course I'm so grateful. I feel the need to say that because it just even seeing some people's comments on TikTok and seeing people's comments in the Facebook page, there was like a specific Australia Eras Tour Facebook page. You know, you said one little negative thing about it and people were just coming at these people saying, oh, well, you should just be grateful you even went because there's so many people that didn't get to go. That's one way to look at it. But I think it's also, I think you can also share, you know, constructive feedback, a negative opinion, just feedback in general and still be grateful to have experienced something. And for some of the people that would literally die on a hill for Taylor Swift, I am not, I don't know the woman. This isn't an attack on Taylor Swift, okay, so please just put your pitchforks down. Put your pitchforks down. This isn't an attack on Taylor Swift personally. I think this is just more of from the viewpoint of, obviously, like I said, there were some things in the stadium, but also just more the machine and the certain people working for her kind of just like the machine of the brand, so to speak. And this isn't an attack on her personal character whatsoever, because I think to do a three hour show is crazy. It's, it's so admirable. Like, I was exhausted and I wasn't singing at the top of my lungs for three hours and dancing around in those type of outfits and those high heels. So it's very, very admirable what she's done. But I want to share some, some opinions that I only really 
heard from a few people in my DMs, but also I had to go to the depths of Reddit threads to find other people that agreed with me. So that was a very long winded rant at the beginning. I'm going to jump in with my first point, which is merch. I also feel the need to say, for those of you who maybe have seen, seen me for the first time or you didn't see my Instagram stories, I attended Melbourne night two and night three. I think it's the biggest crowd that she's ever played for. She's ever played for a crowd so big. It was 96,000 people. This is the biggest show that we have done on this tour or any tour. The merch was something that I had heard. I'd say whispers, but it was more like shouts. That it was a nightmare. So I was going into this experience expecting it to be really hard and really exhausting and really tiring because that's what I've heard. I was quite shocked that it was so easy to get merch for me personally. My sister and I flew into Melbourne on Friday. The concert that I attended was Saturday and Sunday. So Friday we flew into Melbourne and she was performing that Friday night. And just as my sister and I were leaving the hotel to go try and get merch, keep in mind the flight was delayed, we just had some issues, so we were running a bit behind on our schedule, but we were on our way to go and try to get merch. And we had met a girl and a mum just coming back from the merch line. I was like, oh my God, how was it? And they told me that they had waited in the sun for two hours to get this merch and they didn't have any sizes left. For, oh, they didn't have any sizes. They didn't have any extra smalls. And so my thought was like, oh my God, they're probably not even gonna have any smalls by the time I get there. But they just looked very exhausted and I actually didn't realize they, were, they flew in that morning, the 6 a.m. flight for like close to $700 apparently. Absolute madness. The airline industry totally took advantage of this whole Taylor Swift excitement and just bumped up the prices. But yeah, they flew in that morning and I think it was like a, Perth to Melbourne's a pretty long flight in terms of like uh, domestic. And you know, the fact they just spent two, over two hours lining up in the hot sun. And at that point, I think it was like two or three o'clock maybe. And they had to quickly hurry up and get ready because the show was starting at like six. So they really need to hurry up and get ready. So yeah, they even said like, you could just tell they were super deflated. Like they'd even said, you know, the one girl said, I've been to all five of, this would be my fifth show. I've been to all of her concerts here in Australia, all of her tours, and I've never experienced anything like this. Like this is so different to the other shows. And that's what I feel the need to kind of get across as well. And you'll see this running theme throughout the whole video. It was a very different experience to the other Taylor Swift shows that I've experienced. And just for some context, I went to the Red Tour. I went to the 1989 tour. I went to the Reputation tour. And this was my fourth, I went to the Eras tour. So this was very, very different experience to all of the other tours that I've, I've personally been to. I was quite shocked when my sister and I got there. There was multiple merch tents set up and we went to the first one. They didn't have any extra smalls of anything. So we ended up getting a lot of smalls and I got one jumper in a medium, like a one hoodie in a medium. We were lining up for like 10 minutes, 10 minutes. I was shocked. I was truly shocked. We then thought, well, that was so easy. Let's go to the other merch tent around the other side and see what they've got. That was an even shorter line. There was nobody there. You may have seen the controversies online, but if you managed to get a VIP ticket and you got one of your VIP boxes, that actual ticket in there had 2023, not 2024 on it. And if you saw her last year, that makes perfect sense. But if you were part of the 2024 tour dates, it doesn't really make any sense. So I did receive an email uh, I don't know, a few weeks ago saying that they had limited numbers available of these tickets that you could go and pick up and collect. So I was just assuming, you know, limited numbers, I probably am not even gonna get one, but I was quite shocked to actually, you know, walk up to what was a very short line. So I ended up getting my 2024 ticket and I was just really quite shocked with the whole experience. And I remember walking out of that line, of the merch line and being like, oh my God, like, did we just get lucky or is this just, because this is what I was building up in my head. I was expecting it to be such a long line because, you know, not only that girl and her mum in the hotel, I had had interactions with probably like two or three other women that were in Melbourne at the time with, with bags, with merch bags, and they said they were lining up for hours. So I left, I left that line and I literally said to my sister, oh my God, did we just get lucky? Like, I'm so shocked. And one of the security guards actually overheard me and she said, yeah, you did get lucky. Like you should have seen this place a couple of hours ago. It was madness. So I actually think, and I don't know if this is worth mentioning, if you're someone who actually is still going to the Eras tour at some point this year, there is probably a certain time that's the best time to go up and line up for merch. I found that it was better to go the day before and at a certain time. So I think by the time we actually got to the stadium and figured out where we were, it was about four o'clock. 
And I think that was a perfect time to actually line up for merch because most of the people were either A, at home getting ready for the show or B, already at the stadium waiting around for doors to open. I think it was a great time. I think if I'd gone any earlier, I would have hit a crowd. And if I'd went any later, I would have hit a crowd as well because we were actually told, I don't know if this is the same way you are in your country, but there was like a certain size bag that you could bring in. So I was gonna stock up and merch and I was actually, I, I didn't think I'd be able to even bring it into the stadium. So I think a lot of people had that same thought. So I think a lot of people went a bit earlier in the day, which is what caused the huge crowds. Whereas at the time I went with my sister, people had either already picked up their merch or they were at home getting ready or on their way to the concert. Because I think by the time we were ready to leave the whole merch situation, I think it was about like, five-ish and I could tell that the, it was busier, it was a lot busier around the stadium. So that's something to keep in mind. The, the merch thing, I'm actually shocked at how simple and easy it was. I even feel like I'm gonna get attacked for saying that because I know there are people that lined up for so long, but I think I just got lucky in that sense. You know, this isn't my expertise, this isn't my forte. And maybe someone in the comments down below can explain to me why this is the case. I just don't understand why the merch is not available online. Like if you go online, there is one merch item available from the Eras Tour and it is a literal poster. That's the only thing that's available. I don't understand why you cannot order merch online. I just think it would save so much time, so much stress from people because there are so many people, I think, who managed to get tickets to this show who probably didn't even, who completely missed out on merch, who didn't even get to get merch because it had completely sold out. Um, all the lines were just way too crazy. The fact that there were people lining up for two hours in these merch lines, keep in mind guys, it's summer right here in Australia right now. It's hot, it's summer. At least provide water bottles, at least provide shade for people. Like making people line up in hot sun for hours is not really like a smart idea, I personally don't believe. And also it should be available online. I just think it's really, if anything, a bit of a public hazard the fact that these huge lines exist. We had already booked our flights by the time I received an email that they were doing a pop-up shop in uh, one of the, the hotels in Melbourne, The Crown. And I just thought, yeah, that would have been amazing. But again, I just don't understand. Like, apparently these lines were huge. I heard from people who actually went to this Crown pop-up that they waited for hours. Hordes of people standing around in a public space, lining up for hours. It just doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand why the merch was not available online. I personally don't understand that. I'll never be able to understand that. Maybe someone can let me know in the comments down below. I also think it was really kind of annoying that there was, like, a weird kind of like a difference in rules and a difference in system with the tickets versus the merch. Like if you didn't get tickets or if you did, you would know that there was so many, so many issues around tickets. Like they were, they were strict on how many you could buy. Basically, you know, if you wanted to go with your four friends, but all you got offered was two on the website. So all you really could get, that's all you could get. They were very strict and like almost fear mongering with tickets. They didn't, they were trying to avoid people, you know, overselling tickets for hundreds and thousands of dollars. They were very strict about the 10% rule. You could only sell your tickets for 10% over. And if they managed to find out that you were selling them for ridiculous money, you could have your tickets canceled without notice. Like they were, they were very much like fear mongering. There was a lot of strict rules around tickets. And I don't really understand why those same rules don't apply to the merch because you know, I remember just thinking, oh my God, like I'm going to Taylor Swift. Oh my God, yes, like, oh, like I can relax. And like, it's not really the case because the merch is a whole nother beast that you have to deal with if you want merch. I've heard people make the argument that, you know, well, even if you didn't get tickets to Taylor Swift, you should still be able to buy merch. And I can see arguments for and against because my whole thing is like, yeah, I understand that. But then I also can kind of see it from the point of like, well, no, because I don't know if you've had a look on eBay recently, but a lot of these, this merch is literally selling for double and triple the price because people just lined up, got what they could get, and then were planning to upsell it and make a profit. And it's just a little bit frustrating because that means a lot of real genuine fans actually missed out on items they wanted because people just bought up what they could and sold it for a profit. And I think going back to the ticket example, there was a limit on tickets you could buy. There was not a limit on merch. You could buy as much merch as you wanted, which I think is what led to being having very limited sizing. Like all through Melbourne, all through my weekend in Melbourne, I saw a lot of little young girls in these giant, like giant hoodies, giant tops, basically like down to their ankles. It was, you could tell it was completely the wrong size. They were wearing like crazy, crazy sizes, but that's because it's all that was most likely available to them. In her merch regard, 
Her team's really letting her down. Looking at the time and I'm like, oh my God, I'm still on merch and I've still got so much more to say. This is where I'm gonna probably piece some people off. I'm gonna show you some footage because I just can't be bothered going to pick it up now. I can't be bothered going through my wardrobe and I also think some of it's in storage. But like I said, I've been to multiple Taylor Swift tours. I sound like an old person. Merch ain't what it used to be. Let me tell you, merch is not what it used to be. I have two blankets. I have a beautiful red one that's like the, the original kind of red album cover. I also have a beautiful blanket that's like got these nice colors on it and it says, is this the end of all the endings? I also have this jersey that I am obsessed with. I would have actually worn it to this last tour, the Eras tour, but I was too scared I was gonna ruin it. So I'm like, no, no I'm not wearing it. I didn't even wanna wear my reputation merch. Check out this jersey. Like it is so cool, it's so fun. It's one of my favorite merch things I own. It's one of my favorite bed tops and this is from the Red Tour. Check out that material, check out the style, check out the design. To me, it's just so original and different. I just feel like this merch wasn't like giving the same vibes. I would have really loved a giant blanket. It's just really basic merch to me now and I just don't think it was ever really like that with the other tours, but this I have this merch I personally believed was a little bit more basic than other merches previously. And I also would just like to say one thing. I don't know if because she has a lot more of a male fan base than ever before. I don't know if that's why the sizing is so different, but like this is, this is a small, this is a small. <laughs> I think we could all agree they're pretty big for a small, even an extra small would probably be pretty large. And I, it, when I compare it to my other merch, like my reputation merch, th look at the sizing difference. And I just think with how much bigger she's gotten, I'm just kind of shocked that nobody kind of thought, hmm, maybe we should do like men's and women's sizing or maybe even kids sizing. Like I'm honestly shocked I didn't see kids sizes because like I said, there were so many little kids running around, so many kids in these giant oversized pieces of clothing that were clearly too big for them. Swifties, I need to know if your merch was a fail too because I can't be the only one that this has happened to. That's the large and this is the small on top and they are the exact same size for reference, size small. And mine, the large. Like, look at the sleeves. Small and large. Come on, guys. Did I get a malfunction? What happened here? I also want to rant about... <laughs> this is going to be a long video. I also want to rant about the merch boxes. The merch, the VIP boxes, okay? Again, let me just stress. Literally, this is the worst VIP box I think I've ever seen. Like when we compare it to the reputation tour with the literal like TV, the little screen was in the box. I recall still to this day, and like I said, it's somewhere in storage, I have a signed, and I didn't realize at the time how like valuable this would be, a signed copy of Red. A signed, like Taylor Swift signed the friggin' CD. That was back in the early days when she wasn't this big. And she obviously had time to sign albums, sign CDs. That's just, yeah, this box, man, this box. I mean, it sounds really horrible. And again, like I feel I need to keep saying, I'm so grateful that I was able to get this ticket. I'm so grateful, but the box, I couldn't care less. This box is just what I, like I personally think it's a bunch of stuff that I wouldn't even pay for. I wouldn't even pay for. When I opened it, I was like, oh my God, it's got a top. And then I unwrapped it, I'm like, oh wait, no, it's just a tote bag. When do I ever use a tote bag? Even the tote bag it came with, you couldn't even take that into the stadium. Like they had certain rules for how big the bags could be. So what's my tote bag gonna be for my groceries? I don't know, like the stuff in the VIP box, I was like, this VIP box is not as good as other VIP boxes. And I just find that funny because she's obviously gotten bigger and the tickets are a lot more expensive, but yet like what you get in the VIP boxes aren't as good. You'll recall when I went to the Red Tour and I got my, my VIP little, you know, bag with their CD in it and everything. It was just such a different experience. There wasn't as many people. And I remember we were even in like a separate private room. Like there was not that many people, maybe like a hundred tops. And we just got to chill out in this room. There was food. That's not like that now. Like you, you would not find <laughs> that tied to an era's tour or probably any of her tours for the foreseeable future actually. Like I just think she's almost gotten too big now that that kind of thing's just, it's not the done thing anymore. I'd like to hear your, your thoughts in the comments down below because I don't know if this is just something I experienced because like I said, it was Melbourne. It was the biggest crowd she's ever done, 96,000 people. Or if this was something that was kind of an all over kind of thing. The food and the water situation. Now, like I said, I went two nights. So the first night I went, I had floor seats. The second night I was up in the stands. And the nosebleeds, I was up, up, up in the stadiums. The first night, 
I did not find it as annoying to use the bathroom, to, you know, get drinks, to get food. The lines weren't crazy, crazy long. And I honestly think that's because I was in the lower section. Up in the nosebleeds, I was quite shocked and annoyed. This is less on Taylor's team and I think more on the stadium. I think this is, I don't know if they just really underestimated what 96,000 people need. But we got there, so we, we arrived before, before her opening act, Sabrina Carpenter, and my sister and I wanted to do like literally the exact same things we did the first night. My sister and I experienced kind of like low blood sugar, so we wanted to get some, some lollies, some sweets, and we wanted to get some chips to kind of help see us through because we were kind of waiting to the end of the concert to have dinner. We didn't want to be eating like hot food in the concert. We ate before the show, but we wanted to also kind of have snacks, candy, chips like potato chips and things like that for the the duration of the show and then eat again at like 11 o'clock 11 30 when we get back to actually more like 12 o'clock we got back at midnight we wanted to eat again then and we we did that the first night successfully during the show we had some potato chips and we also had some lollies some candy to kind of keep us going and that's what we wanted to do the second night and before sabrina carpenter even came on the water in the little food stalls that we went to was completely, completely gone. It was completely sold out. We actually had to walk to a bar on the other side of our level of our state of the stadium to find water. And keep in mind, we got the last four bottles. So the second night we went, we were like, it was my sister and I, but two other people. We got the last four bottles and I don't know, I'm sure they were potentially restocking throughout the night. I didn't see it though. I only just had that one bottle of water. I do think that's really bad. Like, all I'd be looking at like five or six hours out and about, people need to be hydrated. People need to be hydrated and they had no water. The fact that water was sold out before Sabrina Carpenter even came on is pretty bad. You couldn't even get like bags of lollies, bags of candy like we did the night before. I think my sister like ran over to the little candy bar section and grabbed the last four candy bars that she could and that was it. Like that was, that was all that was available. And I just think there are probably other people in this stadium who have diabetes, who experience low blood sugar and they have completely run out of anything sugary. Even the food, like the hot chips, the, the food items, it was crazy. Watching the people behind the counter working the deep fries, they were so stressed. Like you could see the sweat dripping off them. I felt so bad for them. Literally, they would put food out on the counters and just like that it was swiped up. Like you'd literally be standing there and they'd put down trays and then that will be taken again. Like they were seriously under the pump almost like a shortage of food. Like it was, they needed more food. Oh my God, the lines to the toilet. Like I thought night one being on the floor, I thought, oh my God, this is just like what it's like everywhere. How amazing. I peed in literally less than one song. Like I bolted to the toilets during blank space. No, Wildest Dreams. And I made it back just after Wildest Dreams finished. My sister was like, oh my God, I didn't think you'd be so fast. And I was like, neither did I, it was amazing. The top of the stadiums, like the grandstands, nosebleeds, oh my God, it was not like that. The toilet lines were horrendous. And some of you might judge me for this. I was using the men's. I was using the men's toilet, but you know what? I wasn't the only one. Like a lot of women were going to the men's toilet because the women's lines, like the toilet lines were actually crazy. And I think one of the things that to blame is, I mean, I know everyone had so much fun with the costumes and the outfits, but when you have like a bodysuit or these like giant tall dresses or these giant ball gowns, it takes you longer to pee. <laughs> Which is part of the reason why I wanted a super comfy outfit that I could literally just like, sorry to be so graphic, throw up, pee, and then just like get out of there as quickly as possible. I saw, like I was watching the stools. I was like lining up watching the stools and I could literally see entire outfits coming off and sitting on the bathroom floor, like sitting on the toilet floors. These people who had so many layers, who had so many things to take off. And I think this is also what contributed to the huge long lines because a lot of these people that dressed up so extravagantly took so much longer in the lines. So I was usually just going to the men's and I know some of you gonna get really mad at this. I needed to go, okay? When I need to go, I need to go. This is such a whingy video. My next complaint is the stadium seats down on the floor, okay? I don't really know why they were so squished together, but they were. And I only really noticed this when I went night two and was up in the grandstands. Down on the floor seats, it was so squishy. The chairs were so squished together. And it kind of baffles me because there was also so much room on the floor. Like they had left this, these huge 
walkways and I get it, but I also don't understand why the seats needed to be so close together. Like when I tell you I was down on the floor, I couldn't really dance properly. Like my dancing was like this. <laughs> my dancing was like this because I didn't want to like intrude on the person's space next to me. Whereas the night two when I was up in the grandstands, I was like, I was like this. Okay. So look, look at the difference, like in my body movements, I had a lot more room to move up in the grandstands. And I don't really know why that is. The floor seats were like $1,300. And the ones up, up in the grandstand were like just over a hundred. And I had so much more room to move. Getting in and out of the stadium, getting out was, like I said, I don't know if it's because 96,000 people. Oh my dear God, I've never seen anything like it. It pays to wait. My sister and I, so the show finished like pretty much just before 11. We actually sat in our seats, waited in the stadiums, waited both nights till about 11, the first night 11.30, the second night 11.20. So we waited like 20, 30 minutes. It was so much easier to get out. I would not in my dear life ever try to leave that stadium as soon as it ended. You could, you could die. There were people on the Facebook page talking about how they had, you know, a broken leg or they, one woman was saying she was pregnant and she was trying to make her way down the stairs and she was honestly scared that she was going to fall because the amount she was getting pushed and like squished down these stairs. I just think it's a complete crazy safe. Like it's a, it's a safety hazard. It's such a safety hazard. So if you're still going to the tour upcoming, do yourself a favor. Do not try to exit the stadium as soon as the show finishes. Chill out, take it in, sit down in your seat, take a breath, take a big drink, eat some food, like just relax, people watch. You will thank me, hopefully. My final kind of rant in regards to wasn't really the stadium in the arena. It's more just Melbourne in general. Like I, like I said to you, I have never seen anything like it and I've never experienced anything like it. Red and Reputation, I both had to travel interstate to as well. So this isn't the first time I've had to tra travel interstate for a Taylor Swift concert or just a concert in general, but it was one of the craziest experiences. And please let me know in the comments down below if you're from Melbourne. The city was just ridiculously crazy to navigate. So many people were just trying to make more money off of this fandom craze and just all the extra people around Melbourne. It was just crazy. Melbourne was wild. And when I tell you the entire weekend revolved around this concert, it's never been like that before. Like I remember the other times I've been, another concert I've been like, I would just do so much more. The only thing that I got to do that was not Taylor Swift related this entire weekend that I went to the Eras Tour thing was I went to Chanel. Roads were blocked off, like taxi fares were more expensive. We're just getting played left, right and center. Like I'll, I'll never get on the way back. And some of you probably would. And even my mum was like, oh my God, you should have said something. And I don't know, sometimes I'm just like this. Like I'm sometimes too passive. And I just am like kind of so shocked that I just go along with things, which is not a great quality. But this particular man he had one of those little bikes, you know, those little bikes that transport you. And my sister had a bad back. So we ended, man managed to how one down. We were like, how much is it gonna cost for you to take us to the Crown Metropole, which was about a 10 minute walk. And he said, oh, $25. I was like, okay, great. And we hopped in, he rode us back and I went to give him the money and he said, oh, that'll be $40. And I was like, how did we get from 25 to 40? Like, and when I tell you, like that was basically the energy of the entire city. Now granted, there were so many Swifties, there were so many people who were so excited and happy, but there was a lot of scammers around too. And I too, the two other people that were coming to join us for the concert flew in that day. They jumped in a taxi who didn't have a meter. They didn't have a meter. And I was like, oh my God, you can basically see where this is going. The taxi that we took, my sister and I took, it cost $77 to get from the airport to the hotel. This guy tried to charge them $120. So yeah, the whole city, as much as it was filled with just great, excited, happy Swifties, it was also filled with a lot of people who were just trying to squeeze as much money out of people as possible. The whole weekend revolved around merch, resting, getting ready, anything Taylor Swift, like getting there, getting back, food, like food for the concert, food before the concert, after the concert, like the entire weekend revolved around Taylor Swift. <laughs> entire, entire time. Like I said, my run in with the girl in the hotel who'd been to other shows as well, even she said like, it's, it's never been like this. Like it's never been this stressful, like this, just this kind of like, angst almost like this heavy kind of like ah kind of energy overhanging and i think it is just because it was such a big deal so many people so much buzz so much to do so many lines to line up in so much pressure so much stress and i know that may sound really stupid to some of you 
But I mean, I'm, I wasn't the only person who felt that way. So yeah, it's, it definitely was a different energy to her other tours. And I simply think it's just because it's, it's her biggest show and she's just gotten so much bigger than she used to be. <sighs> and I need to really word everything I'm gonna say incredibly carefully because I know that this is a very touchy subject and some of you are literally going to try to hunt me down and end me. I'm well aware. So I'm just gonna be very picky and choosy with my words and what am I about to say? <sighs> the outfits. Now, some of you and most of you are probably really gonna disagree with me, but I do think that the, there's two, there's two elements to this particular topic. The pressure, the pressure to dress up and to dress up in a theme, I've never seen anything like that at any other Taylor Swift show. And some of you, and again, maybe it's just because I'm negative, I'm a Karen, whatever. It's, yes, it's great, it's fun, it's, it's cute, it's fun, it's different, but the toxicity that surrounds that, and it's something that women do. Women naturally compare themselves, women naturally feel like they compare themselves to other women. And this was a really stressful thing for a lot of women, the costumes, the outfits, what, what am I gonna wear to the ears tour? I spent a month before the show prepping, trying to figure it out, and I thought I'd given myself enough time. Oh, honey, best believe I did not, I did not. It got to the last week, and my my wardrobe floor was a mess. Just sequins, glitter, freaking crazy outfits left, right, and center. None of them were comfortable. Sequins, a lot of the time, I find really itchy, and I realized that, you know, if I'm gonna pay this much money for this once in a lifetime experience, I wanna be comfortable. I don't wanna be uncomfortable, I wanna enjoy myself. So it literally took like, the, it was like two nights before, two days before we were flying out to the show and I went to the mall and I just wanted to find something comfortable. And I'm gonna have some photos inserted of the outfits that I ended up wearing. It just got to the point where I was like, screw it. Like, I just wanna be comfortable. And I had a few conversations with different women in the department stores uh, who said, oh, you know, it's something special. And I was like, oh my God, it's for, you know, Taylor Swift. I just, I tried for a month to find something glitzy and glam and like on theme and it's just too much pressure and I'm just not gonna do it. Multiple women I spoke to in these department stores told me various things. One of them actually said, oh my God, don't worry. You're you're the least stressed person I've seen. And I'm like, really? Like that seems crazy to me because I'm such a stress head. And yeah, multiple women in department stores told me that they had women coming in who were so stressed because they didn't want to let down their daughter. You know, their daughter said, oh, you have to dress up. Like, oh, you have to wear this. And like, they didn't want to embarrass their daughter. They didn't want to let down their daughter. They wanted to dress up for their daughter because their daughter wanted them to. Like multiple women were coming in saying, oh my God, like all my friends are dressed this way and my outfit's not good enough and I need to dress up like this and that and that and that. And some of you are going to be like, well, yeah, you know, that's just women being women. Like they don't have to do that. You know, they don't have to compare themselves. It's on them and their low self-esteem. And yeah, like I get it, but also, the pressure is real, like the pressure and the the comparison trap, I, I fell for it. Women, this is what women experience. And I do think there is a toxic side to it as well. And that's one element of it. But the other element of it was just, and some of you are not gonna like what I'm gonna say, because I've seen the comments on TikTok. When anyone tries to bring this up, they just get ripped to shreds. But some of these costumes, guys. I'm dressed as one of the dancers in the me music video, way in the back. I'm Taylor's 2022 NYU graduation speech. I'm dressed as a lock of Taylor's beautiful golden hair. <laughs> I'm dressed as the napkin Taylor used in 2014 to eat a BLT in Nashville. I'm dressed as Taylor if she were born a Viking in the year 866. Oh, I'm dressed as Taylor's middle school principal. I'm dressed as Taylor Swift's cat's least favorite toy. It's an astronaut. Like I get it, so fun, so quirky, so unique, like so attention grabbing and just amazing, but also like so not considerate for the other people around you who have to be in your presence. Like the amount of giant headpieces, like giant light up headpieces, crowns, like flashing lights that I saw and you know, I was down in the floor seats the first night and I was behind a kid, which is, this is a whole other story that I'm gonna get into, but this kid was on her chair the whole time. She was standing up on her chair. And standing up on her chair, she was probably pushing about six two, six three, And I'm about, I'm 5'4", okay? I could not see past her. So I had to basically like stand, like basically share my sister's space because I couldn't see past this little girl who, yeah, actually didn't know many of the songs and ended up leaving. 
before the last era. Um, I recall, I think it was after Bad Blood as well. She said, mummy, is this the last song? I'm tired, I wanna go home. And her mum said, oh no, honey, we've got so many more songs to go. And I thought, I mean, I get it. Like you get the seats that you get and you just take them, but she probably would have been better up in the grandstands uh, where she could have just sat and chilled. Like the floor seats was probably not a place for that little girl. Anyway, some of these giant crowns and these giant light up headpieces that I saw, I just thought, oh my God, like imagine being the person that has to stand behind that and try to see the show. <laughs> like it's impossible. Some of these people had these giant tool, like tool gowns. And I just thought, especially down in the floor seats, you didn't have much room to move. And I saw one girl who had this giant, it was like a wedding dress. And I'm like, imagine, imagine having to stand next to that, like having that up in your space. Multiple people with these giant light up capes, just all this stuff. And I get it, I get it. And this is where, again, I'm probably gonna disagree with a lot of you because I think there is such a culture online. I've spoke about this before, but it's just such a me, me, me focused culture. And I think a lot of people, as much as yes, you wanna look great and you wanna look different, you want people to look at you and notice you and your outfit looks amazing. I just don't think there's much thought anymore about will this affect other people in a negative way? Like, am I going to encroach on someone else's space? I know that's an unpopular opinion today, which is crazy, but I think there was a few people at this concert who didn't really consider other people and how they're like over the top amazing costume might affect other people. Following on from that, the whole costume thing, down on the floor, you actually weren't allowed to take bottled water down. You weren't allowed to take bottled water down. And I get why. We now live in a world where people have just ruined it for the rest of us. You've probably seen multiple videos where people have just thrown things at artists. And that's the only thing I can really think of, like as to why you couldn't have a bottle of water because Taylor probably doesn't want to have a bottle of water thrown at her. But the alternative was we had cups. And when I tell you <laughs> my cup of water, because of the girl in front of me had, you know, glitter all on her body and sequins all on her outfit, there was sequins and glitter in my water from other people's body and clothes and that was just that's just how the cookie crumbled this last one i'm going to end on is again an unpopular opinion because i've literally seen the comments on tiktok night two we had a screamer we had a screamer ladies and gentlemen and it's funny because like i said going back to my other point about the costumes this is an unpopular opinion, which truly shocks me. So many people were like, what's the big deal? Like, get over it. You're being a loser, crybaby. Oh, wow, 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 let her live. She's having a good time. But again, we live in such a narcissistic culture that it's just so me, me, me focused. People don't really consider how their actions affect other people anymore. Night two, there was, I think she was a Gen Zer. She was oh, maybe like, maybe 18, 19, early 20s maybe. And I wasn't the only one, okay? Before you go, oh my God, Kaylin, you mean you cry, baby? I wasn't the only one, okay? There were multiple people in my section that would literally turn around and look at her, almost trying to like subtly give her the hint, like, you need to calm down. You're being too loud, like literally, you're being too loud. And yeah, I know this is an unpopular opinion because so many people in the comments are like, oh my God, let her have fun. She was a screamer, she was a screamer. And the only way I can really describe it, I'm not going to try to emulate the scream because I just can't, I don't wanna do it. I think my neighbors might actually think something's wrong with me and call the police, that's how loud it would be. And I hate to have these morbid conversations, but I need to paint you a picture. The only way that I can describe to you how loud she was screaming was quite a morbid way, but just stick with me. It's, it's, I'm trying to paint the picture for you. So I don't have a kid, but I have Flynn who I love. I love with, I love him with my entire being. And the only way you would probably catch me screaming that loud is like just the vision of, oh my God, that's my worst nightmare. But the, my, the vision of walking outside my house and Flynn is outside on the road Oh God, I hate to think about it. And a car is coming towards him, full speed. And the noise that would come out of my mouth that would be like, Bleh! like, I can't, I, don't, I, don't, I can't even do it. I'm not gonna do it because it's gonna be too loud. But you probably know what that feels like. Whether you have a daughter, a son, a niece, a nephew, a family member, a dog, just as much as it's morbid, imagine that scenario. That is how loud, like that scream that you would, that would come out of your mouth, that's how loud she was screaming. And not just, you know, not just one song, not just two songs. It was probably like every second to third song, she was screeching, screeching. And like I said, I wasn't the only one. And 
And unfortunately, we live in a world now, and I'm pretty sure other people around me thought that as well. We can't, we can't say anything to her because then we'd look like the bad guy. There'd be nothing stopping her from filming us and putting it on TikTok and it being a viral moment and then we'd be the bad guys. It's unfortunate because a lot of other people I could tell the way they were looking at her, they wanted to say something but they didn't feel comfortable. It was quite an interesting phenomenon and this is going back to my whole point about like the narcissistic generation and just the narcissistic society we were living in. So she had two cameras, right? One of them, she had a professional mic attached to her camera and I don't know why because she was literally screeching like the mic. The mic on her phone would have picked it up and her camera. She had a, a vlogging camera and she had her phone, right? Two cameras pointing at her not filming the show guys no 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 they weren't they weren't they weren't pointing at the show cameras were both facing her screaming screeching like she was performing a show for her two cameras and yeah it was it was really quite interesting to see and i i'm not a psychologist but in that moment i was I'm not gonna lie, I was highly fascinated. Highly, high, and I am highly fascinated. You know this, you know this is my last videos. But like, I am just so fascinated by human behavior and the weird things that are now normal in society because of the front camera and because of social media. Like, this whole thing, like filming yourself, like screeching, squealing, screaming so loud. I don't know, we live in a world now where you can't say that there's something wrong with that. But in my opinion, there's something, there's something wrong with that. So yeah, I'm ready to get ripped to shreds for that one, but it is what it is. Now I'm moving on to my final little portion, which is really quite long. So I need to wrap it up. I really need to wrap it up because we've been here for way too long. Compared to other shows, like I said, this one wasn't my favorite. Reputation was actually my favorite. I enjoyed Reputation, 1989, Red, like all of them, actually a lot more than I did this one. And there's maybe a few reasons for that, and I'm gonna get into them, but when I was sitting in the crowd both nights and when she said, you know, who went to my reputation tour, it wasn't very loud. Like the the acknowledgement from the audience was quite like not as loud as when she said, Is this the first time you've ever seen me live? Oh my god, the crowd went wild. And I do think she's really kind of ramped up in popularity. I think Lover, Lover, my opinion is the Lover album, but I'd like to hear your theory. I believe that Lover was when we saw just more of like mainstream people listening to Taylor Swift and more people kind of jumping on the Taylor Swift fandom. And also I think we saw kind of like a different type of fan. That's what I believe anyway, but I'd like to know what your theory is. Like what was it for you? It probably was a bit of everything. You know, it was probably Lover. It was probably her two pandemic uh, albums. It was probably also her re-recordings that really brought up to popularity. When I compare Reputation and just when I think as well, like she walked through there was one video, I'll see if I can find it. She walked through and was like touching people's hands and like thanking them. We just don't see that. Like that that was, that could not po be possible at this particular concert. Also at all her other concerts, she did this thing. The Reputation one, she was on a giant snake. The red one, she was on like this kind of like giant cherry picker. <laughs> and the 1989 one, she was on like this, this other giant thing where she'd actually kind of launch herself. And I'll see if I can find videos on TikTok or in my camera roll. But she'd actually launch herself into the crowd in a way that she could get closer to people like it was really quite cool it just wasn't possible with the eras to it it wasn't i don't think it was really possible to do anything like this because she had to get through so many different eras and also there was just so many people i just loved the experience of being able to experience each era individually like reputation 1989 red i like that experience of, of going through someone's kind of entire album and kind of going on that journey i hate the word journey but that kind of experience of going through somebody's entire body of work in an album, as opposed to kind of going through someone's three hour show, which like I said, it was great. It was amazing that she was able to do a three hour set. But like I said, I just prefer those moments of that kind of singular album experience. I, it, to me, it feels more personable. It feels more personal. It feels more, just feels a little bit, there's a bit more soul behind it. There's just a little bit more. And yeah, like I said, she got to go out in the audience. They're just It just felt like I, I was able to get more of her from those other shows than this one, which is crazy, right? Because giving three hours of yourself is a lot. But weirdly, I just felt like I got more of her from the other shows and I'm just so grateful and glad that I experienced Red, 1989 and Reputation. Like I'm so glad I got to experience those as well. And 
as much as some of you are gonna hate that I'm saying this, they were my favorite shows and, and Reputation, oh my God, like Reputation was my favorite. And the Reputation one, Shadow, like actual working fountain, you know what I mean? Like, and yeah, I think that the stage and like the, the full on, you know, basically like electronic kind of like TV, what was it? It's like this TV style stage. It was really cool, it was great, it was wonderful. But to me, that just doesn't come close to her literally like on a giant snake head going around the, the stadium. I remember like, <laughs> lying in the confetti like doing snow angels and the confetti at reputation was literally like little newspaper cutouts like newspaper clippings of her and this confetti was just like regular confetti and again I don't mean to sound ungrateful I'm just trying to compare and explain to you how the other tours had just felt so much so much different to me and I think it's because she was trying to get through so many different eras and there were certain eras that I think you only really got like two or three songs and other other eras you got more I would love I would have loved but obviously COVID got in the way of that I would have loved an entire concert so I could actually listen to so many songs that I love that I didn't get to hear but yeah it's just because she just had to get through all the different eras and in a certain amount of time that's what made it I think the way it was this was an experience like no other. It was like a once in a lifetime experience. I think we're gonna look at this time in the future and some of you may laugh at me for this, but I honestly think this will be comparable to kind of like seeing the Beatles, you know, like, oh, where were you? Like, did you see the Beatles play? Like, did you see this tour? Like, I kind of think it's gonna be on that same level. And I think that's what also made the ticket so hard to get was, it was such a big deal. It was such a once in a lifetime opportunity for a lot of people and people who probably weren't even necessarily huge fans just wanted to go and experience this just because of the kind of historical once in a lifetime element behind it. And I think that's also what made tickets quite hard to get was just the the pressure to experience this. It probably is kind of a once in a lifetime thing and I'm super fascinated, super curious to kind of see where she goes from here. I don't know where she's gonna go from here. She does have a new album coming out in April. I don't know if that will be a tour. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you think that's gonna be one she tours or not? It's her heartbreak, it's her breakup album. I don't know if I see her touring that one. Maybe she will, but I just don't know how you go back to doing regular tours after this. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below if you think she's going to return to regular touring or if you think she's going to take a break or... Yeah, I just, I'm super curious to hear what you think. Another element of just the kind of scarcity of tickets and how people missed out and just like the once in a lifetime moment surrounding it and, you know, kind of like the, the toxic side of the fan fandom was... You know, I saw so many people on TikTok and so many people on Instagram stories and complaining. I mean, look, I just did a whole video. <laughs> but I'm calling it constructive criticism. But people basically saying like, how dare you? Like, how dare you go more than once? Like, you shouldn't go more than once. If you got tickets, you should give them to someone else. Or, you know, people shaming people for bringing their boyfriends or bringing someone who's not necessarily a huge fan because basically saying that that person didn't deserve to go and they should have been able to go. Something that genuinely pisses me off is when celebrities and influencers are on this trend. Like it's a trend to go to a Taylor Swift concert and you one, don't even know the songs, two, don't even like Taylor and three, post shit like this. Okay guys, it's happening. We are going to see Taylor Swift in LA. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a Swifter, Swifty. I appreciate her music. Like she's an incredible artist and I feel like she's gonna put on a sick show. And I know like her old school tunes, like I know most of them and I know this new, it's you. <laughs> I know this one. Or even, I even saw a few TikToks of people literally filming other people sitting down or like just looking on their phone. I was on my phone at one point. I was looking at the set list. I wanted to know where we were and like what order we were in. People were literally filming other people sitting down or on their phones, shaming them, shaming them for being on their phones or shaming them for sitting down, taking a break. Because how dare you sit down? How dare you take a break at Taylor Swift's concert? Someone else could have used that seat. Someone else could have been there and enjoyed it so much more than you. And I don't think I really need to go into why that's toxic. I think if you're pretty level-headed, you would also agree that's, that's not, a good mentality to have, but yeah, anyway, I don't think I need to go into that. Partly because I've been rambling for so long, I'm not going to. My last thing, my last thing that I want to get into, and I would love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments down below, because I can also acknowledge that 1989, Red, and Reputation, one thing that is different, well, there's multiple things, but one big thing that was really different between those tours and now is the fact that we now have access to so much social media. And one thing I'd like to hear your comments in, like, and your thoughts in the comments down below is, I wonder if I would have felt differently about this tour if I went in with no expectations. Obviously I can't, I can't tell, I can't answer that, but I still think I would have preferred the other tours. But I wonder if a big part of it is because, you know, 
social media in a sense does kind of not ruin ruins not the right word someone help me i've been filming for too long <laughs> But like, because you can basically watch the entire concert on TikTok. You can basically watch the best moments, not even the best moments, the entire concert on TikTok. You know, even if you try to refrain from that as much as possible, it's almost hard to stay away from, you know? I don't know about you, but so many people's For You pages was probably just filled with, with TikToks and, and various videos of the concert. And I do wonder if because we had access to it and because we now live in a world where we can see things and experience things through a phone screen before we actually experience them in real life, if that almost kind of changes the experience for a lot of people. That's a theory I'm also spitballing. And I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And yeah, I just think my final, my final closing thoughts are, as much as I had a great time, I don't know if I'd do it again. I did it twice. And some of you again are gonna wanna literally kill me for saying this, but I actually had the opportunity to go a third night in Sydney and I declined. I turned it down because I'd already been twice and it's, it was exhausting. It was really exhausting. It's funny, if I had an opportunity to see Red or 99 or Reputation again, I, I wouldn't, I'd go again. Like I loved it a million times over. This was just felt different. I think it's because she's gotten so big now and the machine surrounding her has just made it so big and there's so much pressure and it, it is quite exhausting. God, I can't imagine how exhausting it is for her actually performing, but yeah, it's, it was different. This one was different for sure. And if it's like this, if this is like what her tours are gonna be like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I say that now, but then watch me, watch me just like lose my mind over the next album and really want to see whatever other tour she comes out with. But yeah, it's definitely different. Definitely different. I'm glad that I got to experience it, obviously, but this is my little, little, um, this is my giant run. I need to wrap this up now. I've been talking for way too long. I really hope that this didn't come across too negative and too whingy and too whiny. And I mean, a few of you asked my experience, my opinion, and I wanted to share it because I think so much of what we see on social media is the highlight reel and people very rarely talk about things that aren't that great. So I kind of wanted to share this partly because I think we need to see more balance on social media. You know, not everything's the best thing you've ever experienced in your life. But also because I just wanna know if anyone else feels this way. Because like I said, guys, I had to go to the deep dark depth of Reddit to find people that agreed <laughs> with this. Cause I think it's an unpopular opinion or maybe it's not. Like maybe I'm just opening the floodgates for other people to also admit, you know what? It wasn't my favorite one either. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And please do not eat me alive. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I'm gonna have another few linked to you right here if you wanna check those out. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video and I will see you in my next one.